So in this final video on the Sculpt tools, we're going to take a look at the Freeze tool and the Mask tool, uh, and we'll take another look at the Erase tool. So I have my mesh here. I'm going to up the resolution on it by doing Shift D, and I will create a layer. Remember that by creating a layer, that'll give me a little bit more flexibility because I'll be able to use the Erase tool. I wouldn't be able to use the Erase tool otherwise. Uh, layers will also help with this other tool that we'll be taking a look at today, which is the Mask tool. So I have my Sculpt tool enabled. Uh, in the previous video, we looked at the stencils. So I'm going to use a stencil and I'm going to uh, do a little bit of sculpting through the stencil here. And I'll hide my stencil. Here's what I have. Uh, you'll remember, because we've covered it in an earlier uh, video, that the Erase tool works with layers and it'll allow us to erase whatever is on that layer. So the Erase tool can be quite useful. However, we've got this other tool, the Mask tool, which we can use in many ways very similarly to the Erase tool. However, it'll give us even some additional functionality, and we'll take a look at that now. So I'm going to select my Sculpt tool once again. I'll enable my, uh, my stencil here, and I'll just go ahead and do a little sculpting through the stencil. And I'll hide the stencil. So let's take a look at what we can do with the mask tool. I'm going to enable the mask tool and I will uh, use it similarly to the erase tool here. And you'll see that what I'm doing is I'm not really erasing these areas, uh, but rather I'm masking them out, and that is indicated with this red color. Now you won't initially see the red color unless you enable it. I enabled it earlier, uh, and it is enabled here. It is associated with the layer, and you can see that it can be turned on or off. Even if it's not visible, if I'm using my mask tool, I can I can mask out those areas. So it's going to typically be useful for you if when you use the mask tool, if you, uh, if you enable it so that you can actually see it. Now here's what I like about the mask tool, uh, the functionality of it that maybe makes it a little bit more powerful than the erase tool. And that's that I can also use the control key or I can invert, I can invert this tool as well. Uh, and by inverting it, I can bring that detail back in. I haven't erased it, it's still there, I've just masked it out. Now, uh, a couple other things to keep in mind with the mask tool is that you can use it with both stencils and stamps. So if we wanted to find a stencil that we could paint our mask through, uh, perhaps we could try this one here. Uh, I'll paint a mask through it. So for a moment I uh, got confused here. I don't know if you could tell. I was trying to uh, paint my mask through this, uh, this stencil and it wasn't working. Uh, the reason being that I forgot that I inverted the function. So I'm going to uncheck that. And now if I paint my mask through the stencil, you'll see the effect I get. I'm going to disable that and there you can see it. If I paint my mask through here like this, through the stencil, 
and then select let's say my sculpt tool you can see that I can uh, continue sculpting on it and the areas that I've masked out will not be affected. Uh, this is a very powerful feature of masks. In addition, I can also uh, select my mask tool and use stamps with it. Uh, let's see, we'll pick a nice uh, stamp here. I'll pick this one here. And once again, if I choose my sculpt tool or any of these other tools, I could I could select, for instance, the um, the wax tool, and the areas I masked out will be unaffected. Uh, and don't forget, I know I said this before, but uh, just as a reminder. Uh, with my mask tool selected, if I want to get rid of parts of the mask, I can do that as well simply by inverting or holding down the control key. So all that sculpting that I have underneath the mask is still there. That's what makes masks so powerful. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that if you don't want to see the mask, you can hide it by clicking on this button here. But do understand that the mask is still there. Uh, it's going to still affect your sculpting. It's just not visible. Uh, and also remember that that mask is associated with the layer that you're working on. And the final tool that we'll look at will be the freeze tool. I probably should have shown that to you before showing you the mask tool. Um, because it is similar to the mask tool, just less powerful. Let's take a look at that. And uh, to do so, I'm going to create another layer. That way I'm not having to work with the mask that is on this original layer that I created. Uh, the freeze tool works like this. You simply select the freeze tool and you paint the areas that you more or less want to mask out. Uh, the difference being with the freeze tool is that it is not uh, it is not really associated with the layer specifically, and it's just a temporary mask. Now you'll notice that I'm actually using it with this uh, stamp, uh, so do understand that these stencils, uh, sorry, that these stamps will work with the freeze tool. Uh, we can take a look at some of these other. Uh, stamp images, for instance, and you can see I can freeze using these stamps here. But the stamps, I do not believe, will work with stencils. Uh, even though you can activate a stencil if you paint on it, oh, I'm wrong, it will work. Excellent. Okay. I'm going to uh, hide my stencil. Here is basically the area that I've frozen. It's the uh, blue areas. Uh, it works very similarly to the mask. If I select my sculpt tool or any of these other tools, uh, I can uh, sculpt through it uh, just as if it were masked out. But the thing to keep in mind is that this is just a temporary mask. Now, when I'm done with the mask, or let's say I want to invert this uh, temporary mask, I shouldn't be calling it a mask because it's actually freeze and we don't want to confuse it with the mask. Uh, what I can do is I can come over here to edit. We can invert the freeze and that will just invert the effect so that what was uh, previously sculptable is now frozen and the areas that were frozen are now sculptable. Uh, or if I'm entirely done with using this freeze tool, what I can do is I can go to edit and unfreeze all. So more or less, that's it. That is the freeze tool. 
So that pretty much does it for the sculpt tools. Again, we may cover the remesh, reduce, and refine tools in a later video, but otherwise we've covered all of these tools here. Uh, what I really recommend doing is exploring and experimenting with them. Use the different sculpt tools, try them all out, uh, adjust their settings uh, here on the right-hand side of your interface, and also explore using both stamps and stencils. I hope this video has been useful for you and thank you for watching.